This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Atmospheric Science playlist, and we're looking at ozone, the ozone layer, the part of the stratosphere which is going to have the highest concentration of ozone, and why this is in terms of not looking so much about the formation or dissociation of ozone molecules from oxygen, but more on how the UV, the ultraviolet radiation, we receive from the sun as part of the energy spectrum. What happens to that UV light and energy as it comes into the atmosphere and interacts with ozone, and how it absorbs and emits infrared radiation? As a quick review of the physics of energy that we receive from the sun, the sun is a nuclear reactor in space, nuclear fusion, fusion hydrogen into helium at tremendous rates, tremendous amounts, and has been doing this for the past 4.6 billion years and has a next estimated 5 billion years left on its lifespan before it turns into a red giant. So the sun gives us all types of energy. Now, this energy comes in different wavelengths. Wavelength is the distance from the crest to the crest as this energy particle moves through material. In terms of space, it's a vacuum. So we call this radiation. So radiation is a package or a luggage that contains these different wavelengths. And each wavelength is a different kind, or we call it a different kind of energy. So the shortest wavelength, the most energy and the most harmful is gamma on the far left, the shortest, then X-ray and then ultraviolet, which is the focus of our uh, video today. And uh, that's one nanometer to 400 nanometers in size of wavelength. Then we have a small section of visible light uh, contained purple to red based on wavelength. And then infrared, so onto the long wave radiation as opposed to short wave, the infrared, microwave, radar, and radio waves are all stretching out as a longer wavelength. Now in terms of the amount or percentage, we get about 7% of the energy in this package or luggage is ultraviolet about half is around is infrared or heat thermal energy and the rest between 40 and 44 percent is visible light so of the energy we get very small amounts of gamma if any x-ray if any very small amounts of microwave radio and radar energy on the extremes of the wavelength but majority of the received energy from the sun through our atmosphere onto the surface as our energy budget comes from a combination of visible light, infrared and ultraviolet. Now I'm going to do a quick diagram here just to draw out. I like to do these diagrams for my students in the classroom. And I'm just going to draw a surface of the Earth. So the crust and the basis for our diagram. And then we're going to draw in the tropopause. So that being said, we have our troposphere, which is between 7 to 10 kilometers in altitude, generally higher over the tropics, over the equator, because the heat versus the poles, so on average 12 to 20 and then we have the stratosphere, which is the point or the focus of this video where the ozone layer is concentrated. There is a percentage of ozone in the troposphere, but the majority is between 20 kilometers up to 35 in the stratosphere. And then we've got the stratopause at about 50 kilometers. And above that, we have our mesosphere. So the stratopause and stratosphere, mesosphere constitutes the middle of the atmosphere. Then we have our concentration of ozone, O3, formed with a combination of O2 plus O and ultraviolet radiation at certain wavelengths. Now, around 325 nanometers, that's the energy required to break the bonds. So anything smaller than that is sufficient to break the bonds and form this ozone in the stratosphere. So the energy comes in, it comes through the thermosphere, through the mesosphere, and it really encounters that higher percentage or high amount of air molecules and air pressure and density, and it interacts with the oxygen in the atmosphere and forms ozone. And this is a range of one 
to 400 nanometers in wavelength. So anything smaller than that 10 to 1 is actually on the X-ray spectrum, that little overlap X-ray. So we can break down this radiation of ultraviolet radiation into three separate divisions, basically based on wavelength. UVC is the most harmful shortest wavelength and that is between 200 to 280 nanometers uvb which is the medium one which is 280 to 320 again which is harmful and uva which is between 320 up to 400 nanometers now ozone is a pretty awesome molecule because it actually absorbs and is very efficient at absorbing certain wavelengths which is ultraviolet so uvc which is below 290 nanometers ozone actually completely absorbs 100 percent so nothing gets through that ozone layer uvc uvb about 90 percent is contained absorbed by the ozone layer and about half of UVA is allowed in because UVA is a larger wavelength so the ozone molecule is not as efficient as absorbing this length compared to UVB and UVC so it allows half of it down to uh, the surface and this is how we get our lovely tanning in the summer when we're on the beach sunbathing. So there's a beautiful reaction in the stratosphere where the ultraviolet radiation at certain wavelength is powerful enough to break the ozone bonds the covalent bonds and form ozone that in turn forms a larger molecule which again is beautifully suited to absorb the incoming ultraviolet radiation and it can absorb the majority of it only let in a small amount of uva but this ozone layer is a protection for organic life it is a shield and protection and also in the same breath the same chemical reaction is forming and breaking down ozone in this ozone photolysis reaction, which is amazing. It's a beautiful natural reaction that enables life to prosper on this planet in addition to other factors, both physically and chemically. But this layer is there for protection, and it's absolutely amazing. And in addition to this chemical or photochemical reaction that's happening above our heads, between 25 kilometers up to about 35 or 40 kilometers based on latitude based on other factors that this ozone layer is protecting life but also is quickly formed and slowly broken down within the certain layers but there's a concentration now there's parts of the atmosphere that have ozone and some don't now the concentrations in the stratosphere there is tropospheric ozone which is a cause or can constitute to the greenhouse effect and smog and radio forcing in the atmosphere and produce a warmer atmosphere and warmer surface but in terms of the radiation received or moving through the stratosphere it really interacts with ozone at a certain altitude and that's where we get this concentration and that forms the ozone layer now this ozone layer can fluctuate in thickness and, and density and consistency and over the poles it can be very inconsistent and over the course of 1980s and 1990s there were several or, or times where there were holes gaping holes in the ozone layer allowing the majority of this ultraviolet radiation both a b and c to come through and have a, have a negative effect or a change of the energy budget that we receive on the planet so it is not a consistent layer it is a fragile layer and can react with other gases and catalysts in the atmosphere to break down and dissociate the ozone things like cfc's but it is a beautifully naturally balanced system of ultraviolet radiation reacting with ozone Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.